Originally, I was thinking that I would just buy some egg chairs or some kind of swing to hang from our awning to wrap up our fire pit area, but then I thought, that's too easy. Why not build a swing? So let's try that. Have you guys seen those new trendy swings that people have been building out of twin mattresses? It's kind of what I'm going to build today, only I'm going to use a crib mattress because it's a little bit smaller. I don't need my swing to be that big, so let's give it a try. I'm just going to start by building the base, the frame, you know, and then kind of go from there. <laughs> I did decide to go with kind of a cheap pine because I'm gonna paint it and I feel like that'll get it pretty weather tight. But now I'm going to secure the base of this swing. So I thought it would be good to glue the joints together just to make it that much stronger. But I hate drilling and then, you know, lining it up and then drilling and then gluing it and then screwing it. I just, I hope all the holes line back up again. All right, I'm not gonna lie. I am feeling so insecure with how this is going. I feel like I'm just fighting this whole thing and I just hope it turns out okay. I mean, in my head it makes sense putting it together and things like that and I don't know. But it just, I feel so like things aren't gonna be straight or something. <laughs> but I'm trying my hardest. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, my confidence level is improving. I feel like I can do this. Um, one little trick that I did figure out later is that if I were to apply the glue, then the, drill the holes, and then put the screws in, the drill will not get covered in glue. Because when you back out the, the bit, it just kind of cleans itself off. I haven't had any glue on it. So maybe it won't work all the time, but it worked for me. So now I am putting in one more piece of wood down the middle. I'm marking the halfway point so I know exactly where to put it. So I'm gonna put this like in the middle to kind of stabilize it. I think I might come back and put a few more. We'll kind of see how it goes on whether or not I need it. Oops, let's pretend that didn't happen. I accidentally installed a four inch board instead of a three inch board and here my confidence level was so high and I messed it up. But anyway, thankfully I caught it and the reason it needs to be a three inch board is because the mattress is gonna be inset in the frame to prevent it from moving around. So now I have a bunch of holes I need to patch. So if you are confident that I can finish this swing and it will be successful, pause the video and comment the word epic. <laughs> yeah. Okay, it's the next day and um, it's actually really chilly out. Um, it says it's like in the 60s, but I am cold. So I'm gonna try to go ahead and finish out the base of this swing and then hopefully as the day moves on, I'll warm up and I can take my sweatshirt off, but man, I am cold. A slight hiccup we only bought three of the six inch boards and not four so Keith is going to pick up another board on his way home so I can finish out that base but in the meantime I'm going to be working on cutting eight of these boards this is gonna go in the corners of each of the swing and it's gonna kind of create the armrest kind of you know just you'll see <laughs> Here we go again with these plants. I need to form a 90 degree angle for each side. So four, 
to go around my swing and I'm gonna do this with some clamps, some glue, some screws. Hopefully this will not cause me problems. Okay, so I started to struggle with those clamps. It was just gonna be impossible. So I came up with this little contraption, work smarter, not harder. But I went ahead and built up the difference of height and then glued it together and screwed in the piece, the top piece that needed to be fastened. So now I have my L shape and I'm gonna go ahead and finish putting more screws in. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, I was really intimidated and worried on how this was going to work out, how I was gonna get it together. And I mean, that seam looks really good, nice little squeeze out of the wood glue and it looks like it's gonna work. I mean, now I just have three more to go. So I feel like this is turning into a video of what not to do, but I guess that just comes along with building things. There's errors here and there and you just have to overcome them. So anyway, I went ahead and filled, I'm going to use the ugly boards that I split in the back and I went ahead and filled them with a lot of wood glue and then some wood filler to make it look a little prettier and then I'll sand it here in a little bit, but gave it time to, time to dry and so now I'm going to put these on, whoops, <laughs> on all the corners. And it's gonna hopefully start to come together, so. Okay, it's the next day. Sorry, I didn't film more. Um, my battery died. Um, so I, I was on a roll, so I went ahead and I finished all the X's on the sides. And honestly, it took a lot of trial and error of marking with my pencil, cutting, trying to make sure it fit just right, and then gluing the heck out of it. So um, now we just have a few final touches to put on the swing and then we will start painting.
Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and start painting. I'm using the Valve's Power Defense. It's an exterior paint and it is almost like pudding. It's very, very thick. This is the same paint that I used on the Adirondack chairs and actually I have like three quarters of a can left of this gallon. So rather than priming this whole thing and just buying the primer because I don't have it, I'm just gonna use this paint. I know it's gonna soak up really well with the wood, but I just have so much of this paint. So let's get to painting. Okay, got the swing all painted. I don't really like it. <laughs> I like the color, but I think it is too matchy-matchy to the Adirondack chairs in our fire pit area. So I plan on repainting it. And it's a good thing this is the outdoor paint because I'm just gonna go over it with more outdoor paint. It's just gonna be super sealed. But anyway, I decided to go with Black Fox. This is a Sherwin-Williams paint and I got two samples. So really, I think I spent maybe $12 to repaint this swing in the color that I want. But now it's gonna give it like this nice contrast between the light brown and the dark brown. And I'm just gonna mix it together in this honey jar. It's the only jar that I had that was big enough that could hold both paints. That way the color's all the same and I don't have any mismatched colors between the two jars. So let's get this finally painted. <laughs> Okay, I didn't really think about getting the paint out of the drawer, so this is gonna be fun. <laughs> but I painted a little bit on the swing, um, the, pa the last two slats here, and I am loving this color. It is turning out so nice. Definitely what I envisioned. So I put the swing on a couple buckets and it's just about the right height of where I want it hung. And then I found this rope on Amazon and it's a pro manila rope. And it's actually better than like the hemp or the jute. It's more of an, 
I don't know, synthetic type material, but it can withstand the UV rays, which is what I'm most concerned about because it will be in the sun the majority of the day. So it'll withstand really well, but it has that natural color to it. Every single rope that I found online or Googled or researched, it came up like, you know, the very colorful rope. And I wanted something more natural, but something that would hold up. So hopefully this will work well. I got about 25 feet here, so I'm going to stretch it out and basically fold it in half and then cut it and hopefully that'll be a good amount to hang the swing with. Okay, I'm not sure if this is the right way to do it, but I'm gonna use a sawzall, but this is a very thick rope that I don't think that guy can just cut through it or snip it with snips, so I'm gonna try to cut it with this. Okay, so here is the factory cut end of the rope, and then here is mine. <laughs> you can see it's quite a bit bigger. Mine, I, I don't know, I just tried to melt the ends the best that I could. So I think what I'm gonna do, I only have a three quarter inch hole for my rope to go through. So I think I'm gonna thread this side through the entire thing on one side and then same for the other. And then hopefully I can get a good knot at the bottom of each side. The hole is too small. Okay, now that the hole is drilled bigger, I have raw wood exposed and I am out of this black fox paint, but I do have a lot of the original paint. So I'm just gonna seal it up in the middle you know just to seal up that wood uh, with this paint it's like putting it does great exterior paint i just hope it's not as noticeable
thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video of me building this swing around our newly built fire pit just in time for the fall season. It feels so good to have it done and it's so cozy just the way that I envisioned it. And if you've made it this far in this video, I hope that you will choose to like the video and subscribe. It really helps out my channel and I will see you guys next time. Thanks so much for watching. One more thing, the reason that I picked this to be a crib mattress size is because, I mean, crib mattresses are already waterproof. That's the way that they make them. So it was perfect for outdoors. Now, all of these pillows, I'm obviously going to store inside and bring out whenever we have a campfire or something like that. But anyway, I love how the mattress is waterproof. I could leave it out here, I can wash it. I am not worried about anything. It's just like an outdoor cushion.